community of Austin. We meet every Sunday down at the Hot Jumble Bakery, which is at West 5th and Lavaca. As soon as we're done here with the TV show, we wrap everything up and head right on down there. It's free and open to the public. We always like seeing all the new people. And uh, Then uh, once a month, the first Sunday of every month is our lecture series. And next month is John Coons. And he's been on this show a couple times, so regular viewers might recognize the name. He's a science teacher, and he, do, he does some really interesting uh, and informative demonstrations and, to, and really gets some science across to you very easily. And, uh, so, and that's at FERS at North Cross Mall, and again, that's free and open to the public. Anybody wants to come out, come out and join us there. So at this time, uh, I'd like to pass over to Jeff D. and see, give us some highlights of the news. Okay. This. <clears throat> few things happened over the last couple of weeks. Um, obviously, there's been that uh, church shooting up in Fort Worth, and uh, any, if you've been watching the news, you don't need to get any more information from us. Um, lunatic walked into a church with a gun and opened fire. Um, uh, I, I have some comments I want to make later about the way people are reacting to that, but uh, we don't need to do that news story. Um, School prayer amendment returns. Backed by 10 gospel choirs and more than 100 ministers, Representative Ernest Istook announced the reintroduction of his school prayer amendment on Wednesday, September 15, at a rally on the steps of the U.S. Capitol. Last year, in advocating for his so-called religious freedom amendment, Representative Istook re described as needlessly high the congressional, excuse me, constitutional wall that separates church and state, and that and said that he was offering his amendment to punch a large breach in that wall. The past 30 years of court rulings, Istook said, were a systematic campaign to strip religious symbols, references, and heritage from the public stage. His amendment, he declared, is an answer to that assault. Members of Congress, however, were not persuaded despite a multi-million dollar lobbying campaign by right-wing religious groups. Although proponents of the amendment needed two-thirds of the House to vote in their favor, they barely obtained a simple majority. That was last time. Um, who knows what can happen next time this comes up. we got to keep our eyes open. Uh, new reproductive freedom battle. Anti-choice members of Congress pushed ahead with their new battle over reproductive freedom as House Judiciary Committee approved and sent to the House floor legislation that would create a new, separate offense to punish anyone who injures or causes the death of a fetus during the commission of certain federal crimes. The new bill, H.R. 2436, the Unborn Victims of Violence Act, was draft drafted with the assistance of the National Right to Life Committee and introduced in early July by three staunch anti-choice representatives, Lindsey Graham, Republican from South Carolina, Chris Smith, Republican from New Jersey, and Charles Kennedy, Republican from Florida. Uh, the ACLU calls this bill a dangerous attempt to separate a woman from her fetus in the eyes of the law. By attempting to do so, the sponsors are trying to take the first step toward eroding a woman's right to determine the fate of her own pregnancy and to direct the course of her own health care. Anglican Church in turmoil over gay rights. The long-running debate within the world, worldwide Anglican Church over human sexu sexuality has resurfaced. The church, which has about 70 million adherents globally, tried to deal with the issue at last year's Lambeth Conference, the once-in-ten-years meeting of all 800 Anglican bishops. But that conference ended in division. The, the large vote for the traditional teaching of the church that all homosexual activity is, sin is sinful appalled some of the lo more liberal bishops. For ten days this month, the Scottish Episcopal, Scottish Episcopal Church, Scotland's version of Anglicanism, is hosting the Ang Anglican Consultive Council, one of the world's, uh, world church's highest bodies. About 80 delegates from archbishops to lay people are attending the ACC, and on 19 September they are hearing, that would be today, they are hearing accounts from several lesbian and gay Christians of their own experiences within the church. This is part of the unfinished business of the Lambeth Conference, which committed the church to listen to its homosexual members. But one archbishop, Moses Tay, the leader of the province of Southeast Asia, has refused to attend the ACC in protest of what he calls the Scottish Church's heretical liberalism. Dr. Tay is especially upset by a book published this year by the Scottish Church's leader, the Bishop of Edinburgh, the Right Reverend Richard Holloway, who is hosting the ACC meeting. Dr. Holloway, one of the most liberal of the Anglican bishops, 
called his book Godless Morality, a title which drew criticism from the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. George Carey, who said it was unacceptable to leave God out of the moral debate. Dr. Tay goes further, describing Dr. Holloway's book as horrendous and heretical. In it, Dr. Holloway argues for homosexual rights and the, for the legal, legalization of cannabis, which he admits having smoked himself. Gay Christian campaigners say Dr. Tay's decision to stay away from Scotland, which he says is deviating from the traditional roots of faith, is a pro protest aimed directly at them. Dogma director faces down Catholic criticism. Filmmaker Kevin Smith's new comedy, Dogma, about two fallen angels who attempt to use a Catholic loophole to return to heaven by way of New Jersey in the last half, uh, uh, last half year has sparked much publicized protests from the Catholic League. Those protests have prompted the film's former studio, Disney-owned Miramax, to threaten, to, uh, to threaten a lawsuit against the Catholic League. Since then, Miramax co-chairman Bob and Harvey Weinstein bought the film through a separate corporation and went through the precarious search for a distributor. And that's not to mention the anonymous death threats, mostly sent to the Weinstein brothers who passed them along to Smith. The ones that really grabbed you by the throat were the ones like, you Jews better take that money you've been stealing from us and invest in flak jackets because we're coming in there with shotguns, mm -hmm. Smith says. You read that and you're like, wow. Dogma is scheduled to open in the United States on November 12, thanks to a last-minute deal between the Weinstein Brothers and Lionsgate Films. There have been a lot of things written or said about the flick by people who haven't seen it, Smith says, which I guess is standard operating procedure for these people. I've seen it called anti-Catholic, anti-Christian, anti-faith, anti-God. To say the least, it's none of those things. Smith, who was raised Catholic, instead describes it as a fun little film that's getting more attention than it probably observes. deserves. Starring Matt Damon and Ben Affleck as the rogue angels, the film loses, uses lowbrow humor to expose what Smith considers hypocrisies of church doctrine, without suggesting that God is dead. In fact, in Smith's work, she's singer Il Ilanis Morissette, <laughs> or at least that's who plays God. Uh. There's plenty of caustic sex jokes and a dose of tongue-in-cheek wit, starting with the op opening disclaimer that apologized to supporters of a certain stupid animal. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> Members of the Catholic League have been protesting since they heard about dogma. Some read the script and at one point have said the film drags Catholicism down to the gutter level. You kind of scratch your head and wonder why, Smith says, especially when you watch something like Stigmata come out and do $20 million on its first weekend. And for all intents and purposes, from what I've read, I haven't seen it, it seems to be quite an attack on the Catholic Church. Um, I have seen it, by the way, and it is. <laughs> but the Catholic Church hasn't said thing one about that movie. No press conferences, no demonizing of the filmmakers, and I think that points to the simple hypocrisy of the Catholic League. Our film was never really under attack, he says. Disney was under attack. That's what the Catholic League loves to do, go after Michael Eisner and Disney. If Stigmata had been a Disney film, you would have seen press conferences and full-page New York Times ads. But since it's an MGM film, you don't get much press out of attacking MGM. They've got one foot in the grave already. But boy, you get a lot of press out of attacking a company that's got two theme par parks and a network and billions and billions of dollars in merchandising every year. Following the film's screening in Toronto, Smith was flooded with interview requests. Obviously, the film is a hot topic, but does it live up to expectations? In fact, Smith says, expectations are the enemy of his film, more than Catholic protesters upset with its content. I wasn't too worried about people who were making judgments about the film as Catholic bashing, and they weren't happy about that because those people weren't going to go, uh, and they weren't happy with that because those people weren't going to go see the movie anyway, says Smith. What I was worried about was the section of the audience that hears the movie is Catholic bashing and can't wait to see it because they're looking for a movie with teeth, and they get there and watch, and they find out it's just a fun film. Didn't expect <laughs> <a> Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> And that's the news. Oh, what I expect the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> but that was uh, a great example of Christian love there about the Jews taking their money back and they're going to shoot them with shotguns and all that. That just blows me away whenever. Yeah. And, uh, they, but uh, now I uh, wanted to reintroduce our guest this week is David Bagley. And uh, regular viewers will know we've discussed uh, the protest that's been going on and stuff uh, about the Wiccans practicing on Fort Hood. You are from Colleen, and you actually went to one of the demonstrations there? I was a 
I was at the major demonstration, which was at the bookstore in Coppers Cove. Um, the young lady, I'm going to make sure I get to say their names here. They wanted their names said because they made the tape. It was Brian. Keep going. Keep you had going. It. I saw you had it just a Yeah, ago. I had it just a minute ago. I misplaced it. Over. Anyway, <laughs> Brian Wilson, Brian and Aubrey. It's Aubrey. There it is. There it is. Aubrey Nelson and Justin Miller um, went to both protests and made copies. I'm on that camera, and they made co and they made films of it. And we have some video, which if they want to, they can go to it now. Right. Oops. Wait, hang in hey, there. Hey, Vic. No, hang in there. It's coming. Yeah. Well, let us know, Vic, when you when you get that going. Just let us know. <clears throat> so it, uh, uh, basically the Baptists were there protesting against the Wiccans, trying to get them off the. It's their general march against right, the march to, for righteousness against Wiccans, which they've had three, basically three years. And what they were doing was this time they were concentrating on Fort Hood and the Wiccans. Well, see, he has been told through several people the next time he brings his protest on Fort Hood, he can go to federal jail. So he isn't coming there. And they're really tired of him on Fort Hood. Well, uh, tell the viewers who you're talking about. Um, Harvey, Reverend Harvey. He's a independent Baptist fundamentalist of the highest sort or lowest sort, according to your choice. Here oh, here we go. Now we got the tape yeah. working. That's that's Howard Thompson. Howard Thompson's there. He, yeah, we had atheists from Corpus Christi area all over the place. Huh. And uh, I'll go back here again. We'll be back and forth on on that. Okay, but anyway, what happened was we went there and. They had a year to get this together, the Christians did. They showed up with about 20 to 30 kids and maybe 20 adults at most, maybe 15 adults. The whole majority, I got the numbers backwards, about 10, 10 adults or 15 adults, about 20 to 30 kids. It was all children mainly. This is uh, Aubrey Nelson here. You got sound? No, they chose not to use the sound today. Oh, okay. he, but you but, can see him. He's, he's down there. At there we go. No, it's not the sound. That Arlo <laughs> sucks some other sound in for us. Thank you, Arlo. <laughs> that was match. Well, anyway, you see the man there, the guy with the straw hat. There's another piece of video of him at a city council meeting. Well, out there, he was having his people read bullhorns, talking about He invited me personally to go to hell. <laughs> so uh, it was kind of interesting. But three days before the thing started, the Wiccans started emailing and calling each other right. and calling friends. Well, there were two Christian boys that came all the way from Amarillo. That's the second area. And you see, you see his group. Now, when you turn back, when he finally gets to the, athe to the uh, Wiccan group where all the atheists and everybody else was, including the Christians and the Mormons, he's like a two, two, to two or three to one ratio of people. They only had three days to get together. And they had... And it, that's the group. That's the only back again. So, that's the Christians. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, that's the other group out there. But you see, that's where the police presence. They had a strong police presence too, because they were scared of. Like, so there was one there. There was one behind the crowd over there. And you see their group. It's about a hundred to hundred fifty people at five o'clock in the afternoon. But at three o'clock, it's almost three hundred people. Love thy neighbor. This is the Wiccans. These and are the other Wiccans. Protesters. The Wickers, the Christians, the a couple of Buddhists. So there were three times as many. With protesters Wiccans and 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 others defenders of religious liberty as there were protesting fundamentalists and it only took them three days to get them there yeah uh, so why was the guy holding the cross well he was a he was from i think amarillo he was holding the cross saying jesus would be with the sinners not with them oh. talking that they were pharisees so it was interesting protest but but it's not the it's the thing about the protest, it's not concentrated on the Wiccans or our religion or the Wiccans or people whom we support, but it's about the fact we're talking about liberties. Exactly. And about respect of other people's rights. And um, I've always wondered why Harvey, he has a little black book he drags around, can never open up just, just something even I know. Matthew 5 and 6, the Sermon on the Mount, where it says, you know, a little, a little a call, call someone a fool, you're in danger of going to hell. Well, I was called a fool several times. No sworn oaths, you know, the, and the law was fulfilled. And, oh, close the door when you pray. Don't pray in public. Yeah. And don't judge. And a host of other things. And you begin to wonder where this man's coming from. I've talked to him a few times. He believes in a theonomy or theocratic government. He proposes that witches be killed, adulterers be killed, fornicators be killed, uh, atheists would be eventually killed. 
And this man is out there. But the prob problem is not this man, it's the thousands of other little nuts like him running around. All right, I disagree with you. Harvey gets his tape. He already didn't get his tape, by the way. I'm going to copy it to him later. Okay. I consider his ideas nutty, but, I, but Harvey has every right in the world to do what he's doing. But you have a thousand of them at least or more throughout Texas. That's 30 to 40,000 volts. And anybody out there that has a moderate tone of moderate bone in their body, you better get registered to vote this year. That's, that's the big thing. Like Justice Ginsburg, Gin, Justice Ginsburg, can't say her last name very well, Ginsburg, she is now being treated for cancer. Now, two of the other justices, Rehnquist and I think it's Scalia, are getting about time for them to retire. So you're looking at possibility of three to four judges. Scalia. Scalia. So about three or four judges po have the possibility of them being replaced in the next, next, next court press series. Uh, interesting point, yes. So here we have all this. And another thing, Harvey says he's so smart and does everything else. He reads and he knows, he respects the law. You know, the state of Texas, and this is their constitution. And, but in Article 1, Section 6 and 7, it specifically says you will not use state money for religion. You won't give them land or anything like that. But what this protest was, it was directed specifically at these people. It was harassment. And what happened was he walked up and all of a sudden he met what was really good. He met a whole group of people who came from all over the place. Now, the national director for the uh, witches, um, the WAL, the Witches Anti-Discrimination League. The <laughs> Hey, blue, they, they, got, they got lawyers of their own, just like Christians do. That's good. The national direction of the Lady Liberty League, who's starting a uh, political movement. And, uh, of course, you know, they had, the, they, they had myself and Howard Thompson were there. My big, my black hat, atheist hat with the black letters on it, white letters and the black hat, it was on that. It was on the law of local TV stations. <laughs> so what we have here is basically an attack on individual liberties that, you know, even as atheists, we support their right to practice. We just don't agree with it. Exactly. But Harvey represents the kind of lunacy that is really out there. And, you know, it only takes one, a man called me from Dallas. He's a rabbi up there. And he said, I have read about what is going on. You, you send me an email. Let me what, you send me an email next time he comes and we'll be there. He said, I hear the jackboots when I hear his voice. So does he have, a, is, does he have his own church? Is he has a little, little tin hut church outside the highway, like an industrial building. It's a two-story industrial building, and it's out on the side of 195 going toward Florence or going toward Colleen, toward which way you got 195. And he, he runs a school there. Nice. But the problem is he doesn't have classrooms. It's around an area there. I can walk in to see him before I was told never to come back. Mm -hmm. That's another story. <laughs> You've actually been to his church. <laughs> yeah. I walk into his church, and you go into an area, and there's a video cassette player and a chair. And back there, you can see a video cassette player in a chair. They only have two people in there. I don't know what their level of training is. And they call this a school. And, uh, and with all the religious uh, protection that they have, they can get away with it. Well, see, te in Texas, they're not required to submit anything. Exactly. They have no requirements to ha meet any standards. And the only, um, upstairs, from the upstairs, I only saw one good exit. Interesting. So, and yet they're supposed to have children there in a daycare situation. So it, uh, the, that reminds me of a similar, it's a little bit off the line, though, a similar story that's going on here in uh, Austin, Texas. It's uh, Plato's Palace. Yeah. It's actually claiming to be a church. <laughs> and so, what? Yeah. Is that one of those adults? Yes, yes, yes. Swap club. club. Yeah, and, uh, they're a pagan church. And, uh, they're doing oh, that's pagan. Right. And, uh, and, uh, it's because uh, the zoning laws uh, wouldn't let them put in uh, uh, what it, in, I, it's alleged sex club. It's a, but anyway, so they went in. A and, meeting, a, a place of meeting. Right. So they, came, <laughs> so they, they claim a legal status as a church, and so they're actually fighting that, right? The, the neighborhood's actually fighting it. So it, uh, <laughs> the, the state has yet to define what exactly a church is. Yeah. There's well, no legal definition. There's a lawsuit on it now. The, the ethical culture's taking it up. So, yeah, yeah, that's another good example. Yeah. With, well, to talk a little bit about Harvey and about his people, Harvey has said, I walked into his church, and this was hilarious. The second time I walked in, was well, so actually the third, according to the guy who's running the school. I guess one and one makes three to him. <laughs> and I, here, here's a quote from Harvey. Um, 
He added that Wiccan worshippers were tied to large numbers of children who disappeared from their homes each year. Now, is that from the Wiccan homes or everybody's home? I want to know what happened to all those children who disappeared. Okay. This man, that gives you an idea of what he's like. And you'll hear here, um, there were several very good articles on him. Now, how well you can see this. Uh, I don't know. But this is all Camera children. One. These are all children. Camera. This can't. Hold still. No. And that's fine, just hold still. It takes me a couple minutes later. You see all children there. With some of the, let's read all. some of the signs for the people, for the uh, audience. Yeah. The, how, the, the house of the wicked shall be overthrown, get, get witchcraft off Fort Hood, Jesus saves, uh, no same-sex marriages, God hates homosexuals, and these are all children. What has that got to do with the Wiccans? <laughs> I mean, that's, this is how this man works. I mean, he hits every hot button he can. And then over here he says things like, uh, oh, these were the people that came down to be in the pro protest. Unfortunately, Pastor Harvey is uh, so busy telling the world who and what we are, he forgot to ask. And when the truth was offered, he proclaimed it a lie. I don't, and this lady here that came from Irving, Texas, uh, Glenda Argenbright, uh, I don't see this to be Christianity. My husband and my hus sister's husband and family spent 120 years in the military to give them their choice. So okay. he's not getting a lot of support even from the community. But what this, I guess what this really plays to is that I went there and I saw all this. Right. And it was a it was amazing. If they had had a week, it would have been a thousand. It would have been a hundred to one what he had out there. But what is so bad about him is that he has all the stuff he's putting out, condemning them for child abuse and everything else, with no basis in fact. Exactly. There is at least one clean policeman who goes there at most of the rituals. There are nine or ten military policemen that are part of it. Um, I've gone and observed their rituals. Some of my best friends had gone and observed rituals. And to show you how weird Harvey is, last week they were having a uh, yard sale. And Harvey went to the yard sale. I'm not going to say what group it was for. I've been asked not to use their names. Okay. But uh, he went to the yard sale and his wife was looking through some pants. You remember seeing the woman in the white dress that, with the big bottom on, him, on her and the fit in video? Oh, yeah. That's his wife. And uh, he turns around and she's looking at some pants and he starts saying, and what do you think of them Wiccans out on Camp Finlayson running the Boy Scouts off? And then he started going into nakedness, etc., ad nauseum, and they finally had to run him away. This man is out there. It, uh, and like you say, it, uh, it's scary that those people are out there actually voting, and we must educate ourselves and get out there and well, vote. Th this is not the big issue. The big issue is what we're going to do about it. You know, the Lady Liberty League is trying to get the Wiccans, the Wiccans and Pagans organized. There's at least a couple million of them. And there's at least a few hundred thousand of us in the United States. It could make a big difference. And what was really good about this was it was an impromptu coalition of a lot of people who, yes. who disagreed, walked up for one thing, and that was basic civil liberties. And that was a good thing about this. Excellent point. And uh, just remind everyone... This is uh, September 19th. We'll take the phone calls live on the air. That's our number there. So if you're watching us Sunday, September uh, 19th, give us a call and let us know what you think about the Wiccans. If we had any Wiccans out there. Last time we brought that up, we actually had a Wiccan call. Oh, <laughs> you yeah, got a we Wiccan did, didn't we? There. <laughs> so I, you are a Wiccan. Oh, okay. We have a Wiccan uh, off, off camera. <laughs> uh, so, uh, hey. I appreciate uh, the input on that, and uh, definitely keep us up to date on what's going on with this guy, and and especially if he gets any more organized or gets any more any well, bigger church or whatever. Well, the thing about it is that me and Howard showed up last time because it's only two days warning. Right. I'm gonna keep track of. We get a bigger warning. We we'll just invite a whole bunch more people, like at Ethical Society of Austin, and invite you guys to come up, have your own flags, and all. We can actually give them a good old fashioned present. You have more de devil worship to yell at. <laughs> But uh, uh, that reminds me of something else that uh, was in the. I, I wanted to get up early and go down there and see how many people showed up. They were actually calling for volunteers to go back and build the church at Mount Carmel, where uh, the Branch Davidians. Were. So they were going to take a convoy. They were leaving at seven o'clock this morning. Yeah. A convoy up to. Uh, <laughs> who was doing this? <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, I can't up remember. Waco. Yeah, I'm trying to remember who organized this. I like but, not Alex Jones. No. <laughs> Somebody said Alex Jones off the camera. No, Alex Jones had nothing to do with that. Well, I hope they brought everybody brought enough weapons to restock their armory. <laughs> Can I say something about that? Sure. That I, I, I think that they were as loony as the day is long, just like Randy Weaver in the mountains were. 
But I am personally, personally, as my personally tired of the federal government using no-knock warrants and its power in such a way that they will attack small groups of people to, and use it as publicity stunt. Actually have cameras standing by, which right. the Supreme Court has finally said that's not, they can't do it going into houses. That just came out this week. And, uh, and, and they're not supposed to use the military in a police action, yeah. and that was actually a police action, and there, there's still some controversy on whether or not how much the military was actually involved. But the thing is, even I think even we have to realize that, that if that can be done to rant, even that lunatic group, it can be done to somebody else. You know, it hasn't been that well, long since... I mean, look what happens when they do it to people that are even that loony. Yeah. So, no, I don't, I don't think we can expect the, the federal government to go suddenly attacking people that are not lunatics. Well, the thing I mean, why, is... Why would they do that? I mean, they may have thought that they could get away with it as a PR stunt when they were attacking loonies, but obviously they didn't. So well, the thing is, it was so bad that handled they knew they were coming. Yeah. But, yeah. The, but what it comes here is that there's no-knock warrants and the attack on groups, small religious communities, and other small dissident groups who might not, who might, there may be something wrong, but there's a way to do it and a way not to do it. Exactly. And that, it's, and that, that what they did was, while it was wholly wrong, they did have a good reason to go and at least check the health of the children, but they could have done it in a more, a less uh, violent manner, because the sheriff walked in regularly. But uh, speaking of things that were handled totally wrong, uh, you want to make your comments about the shooting? Yeah, yeah cause the, the, I guess I'll have to we, get into this. Because we, we were dead, you know, we were v against the whole idea of these guys praying to convert the Jews and all this. Well, like this, that's, the, that's the first I've heard of this. So oh, okay. Ray informs me this morning that he read uh, that... Uh, that one of the motives to this lunatic that walked into the Baptist church in uh, in uh, Fort Worth and opened fire was he was angry about um, something that he did a story on last week, which was the Baptists praying to convert the Jews, or maybe it was the week before we reported on that. I don't know. That's neither here nor there. The guy's a lunatic. Um, you know, to even even if he had a point, that's no justification to exactly. walk into any place and start shooting people. I'm sorry. Um, but, but you to we're, you know, yeah. it's tough to be a rationalist because when, <laughs> when, when tragedies like this happen and, and people start saying crazy things in response to the tragedy, if you hold up your fear finger and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, that, that just doesn't follow, people immediately assume that you're attacking the victims. And I want to make it clear, we have nothing but sympathy for the families of those people that were killed, and certainly for those people that were killed, that should not have happened. That's a terrible tragedy. We're absolutely against that. But I just want to talk about some of the things that are being said in the wake of this incident. Um, here's, here, here are some comments that were, uh, that were made at uh, some of the funeral services that have, that have happened. We're not angry. We have peace that God is in control, said one victim's mother. This is an opportunity to tell the world about Kim's love of the Lord. Now that's sick in about five or six different ways. Let me just get some of the top ones. Um, first of all, if God was in control, a thing like this wouldn't happen in the first place. You know, if if, if God was some supernatural being watching over his followers, making sure that everything was okay with them, he'd have stopped this lunatic from walking in there and killing people with a gun. And to... We just lost a light. That's weird. Which one do we lose? Is somebody fiddling with the light controls? Um... Uh, Go ahead. Uh, where's, where's, yeah, and for those of you, you Christians tempted to assume that that was a sign from God, if God wants to make a sign, he can do something quite a bit more important than that. Um, and then, <laughs> should I sit next to you or sit the Dan away? <laughs> uh, and, but then, to say, this is an opportunity to tell the world about Kim's love of the Lord, why, why are you turning this tragedy into a PR stunt? Your religion already has members. You know, to, to try to take your tragedy and use it to preach your religion is just sickening. I, 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 can't, I can't see any justification for that at all. Now, uh, you, I know other Christians will argue that, oh, well, you know, God can't interfere with people's free will, right? And that's why he, he allows things like this to happen. 
But that didn't stop another member of this church from claiming, after his wife survived a gunshot uh, that only grazed her skull and didn't kill her, he claimed that she had received special protection from God. <laughs> How can this man walk back in amongst his friends who have relatives that didn't receive special protection from God and ever look them in the face. How dare he claim that this God who's not supposed to interfere with people's free will in the first place saved his wife and let the other ones die? That's completely insane. You know, th th this is a horrifying tragedy. But to, to, to try to spin this to claim that you got the special, you personally got the special dispensation of this god that your friends also worship, but they get killed is just sick. Um, the pastor of the church said, don't expend too much energy trying to understand what happened the other night. Well, that's exactly what you would expect the leader of an organization that is now trying to spin this tragedy to turn it into a PR stunt to say. Of course they doesn't want you to think too much about it. If you thought about it, you might start thinking about questions of how could this happen if there really was this God that is omnipotent, omniscient, and cares what happens to you. So, I, I appreciate mean, that. Yeah, but we have a bunch of callers. I right? hate being yeah. put in the position of having to say this. Well, I hate being put in the position of having to be the rationalist who points out the this, this lunacy and then inevitably is going to be the target of of religious believers saying, oh, you know, you have no sympathy. Of course I have sympathy. Sympathy does not justify standing aside and staying quiet while people say crazy things. Yeah, well, comment, David. The, 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 you have to remember, like, um, it was very, very correct comment was made. Remember, when a preacher talks to you, he's being paid to say it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Would you mind, everyone? This is September 19th. We are taking phone calls live, and we're getting ready to try them. Let's make sure. Let's wow, see. that lit up the lines, didn't it? Yes. Let's go to Mary. Good morning. Good morning, Mary. You're talking about the church shooting. Yeah. Yes. It's I'm not rocket science. I've lived in Texas all my life. I knew it was going to happen. Now I'm going to be not sympathetic. But, I mean, you get a bunch of people in a group, and they're saying one thing, and there's one crazy person out there with a gun, and he doesn't agree. There's pretty good chance he's just going to go in there and shoot him up. I'm sorry. It's Texas. You know? Well, it's, uh, I'm not sorry. The truth no, is the truth. It's no excuse. Uh, we have, uh, set, what, we have five million, um, I don't know the exact number, we have millions of gun owners out there that don't shoot up people. So, right. it, uh, right. uh, you just it's can't. It's going to happen as long as there's crazy people who have guns. Yeah. And I don't know how to fix that. No. You know, I don't have any idea. But you were talking about oh. the federal government. That's just that's just the result of giving up our civil rights over the drug war, okay? Yes. They, they we're losing a lot that way, yes. They've got a morally superior position, and they're going to tell the rest of us what to smoke and what to drink and what to say next. And, you know, they're working on what we think. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that eventually. But somebody, I don't know, I don't know how to stop it. I've been watching it happening for years, and I don't know what to say except shoot my big mouth off, you know, because I still have <laughs> my freedom of speech. This and reminds I, me of, of something else. Um, well, you can go on. Uh, I was watching uh, CNN Talk Back Live, which is just a festival of lunatics. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they, had, they, had, uh, they had guests on the other day. One guy was a... Uh, but we're, we're getting gonna, a lot of feedback yeah, gonna, in here. What's right. with the sound? We're gonna have to fine tune the sound here, Mary. So please bear with us. Go um, ahead, Jeff. They had they had one guy who was a sociologist who's written a book recently about the this wave of fear that people in the United States are undergoing. He quoted statistics showing that the the crime rate and the murder rate in the United States overall is going down, right? It has gone down like 50% in the last 10 years or something. He quoted some figure. I, I didn't write down the statistics, well, so these are approximations. But then he turned around and said the number of reports of murders in the news media has gone up 600%. Interesting. So what he, you know, he quotes these statistics and says basically, yes, isolated incidents like this occur. They've always occurred. They used to occur more, only we reported them less. So there's really nothing going on except paranoia fueled by the news media. Then they have a Baptist minister who's the guest in the studio 
who right after this information is 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 presented turns right around and says well obviously we're there the, this country is going down the tubes and what we all have to do is we all have to come to the lord well, no, we don't have to all come to the Lord. The crime rate and the murder rate are going down. The only thing that's happening is people are being whipped into a paranoid frenzy. Exactly. But just, you know something oh, funny? Oh, just a moment. We're, we're, uh, we're, 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 we can't hear the caller at all now. Vic, is there a problem? Hello. Oh, wait, yeah, there we go. There You're there back. Go. Okay, okay go. but instead of, well, we've got a chance that it's going to get better. People are starting to think better for themselves. And all of a sudden, this media onslaught and this legal onslaught and and we're we're caught under it we're thinking well we thought it might get better but i guess it's not going to get better and then you give into it and you have to be careful what you believe okay they can say it's okay to believe in whatever they want but it's not okay to believe in whatever you want you have to be real careful what you believe in what you give your mind and your imagination to because that's what the future is going to be that's where it lies yeah. Well, okay. Well, I'm I'm go it's not okay to believe whatever you want. It is, it, but it's, but care, it's, but okay, it's more not okay to make laws telling you what to believe. And the number one weapon to kill in this country is blunt injury trauma. Just check the FBI statistics. Take your baseball bat, the frying pan, yeah. whatever's at hand, bricks, wall, and that's how they die. Well, so uh, let's go on down the line to uh, Michelle. Hey guys, Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Hi. Good morning. Yes. It's just this whole, the shooting thing just really irked the heck out of me, too. Um, it, you know, the Christians took this issue of, the basic issue really is, why would the, why did a lunatic have handguns in the first place? Well, yeah. <laughs> and to take it and to turn it into, well, this just shows, this is a personal attack on their religion. It just shows how horrible America's getting and how <laughs> Satan runs everything. And how they just took that whole issue and turned into a PR stunt just blows me away. And Amazing, just, isn't it? It just irks the heck out of me. And that's pretty much it. It's just, you know, essentially what Jeff said, too. And their, their message changes depending on the nature of the tragedy. When it's a school shooting, it's, oh, we got to have the Ten Commandments posted. Oh, we got to have prayer in schools, right? Right. When it's a shooting in a church... You know, where where is that? I mean, yeah, we got to post the Ten Commandments in those churches. We got to legalize prayer in churches. You know, I mean, I know this guy wasn't a member. You know, this is a, this is this is a bit off base, but my but that's my point. You know, whatever it is that happens that's yeah, tragic, that's the they try to spin on. that particular yeah. case to promote their religion, and that's just sick. I, it really is. It just irks me too. And I actually have a question for Dave too. We are having the kids series this morning at Ethical Culture? Yes. Okay. Just yeah. checking. Okay, yeah. um, and, I, I, and that's a great point. Uh, why don't you so talk I'm, about that? For yeah, a okay. Second. Ethical cultural, the ethical, the ESA, the Ethical Society of Austin, is having a children's series, and we're te we're going through common sense thinking, critical thinking, and that's why I'm going to leave in a little while with my wife and daughter. But and they're go and they're teaching kids to think for themselves and recognize critical things in their lives as well as to talk about ethical behavior toward each other and other people, how to deal with bullies and things of that nature. But I would like to say one thing about the church shooting, and I'm not going to be tactful. If that idiot God existed, would it have happened? Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sorry. Later, I, I'm not going to apologize right. for having my feelings. Thanks for calling, Michelle. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. i got to mention something. Though. Sure, go ahead, Arlo. Of all those things Thea said about the school shootings, one important thing you left out was they were saying that God wasn't allowed in the public school. There you go, right. Yeah. God wasn't allowed. There's a better one, right? Yeah. God wasn't allowed in public schools, and that's why it happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. I, I would like to say something about God not being allowed in public schools. Yeah. Sure. You go into... You go onto websites for Jerry Falwell or, or look up campus school clubs for religion. You will find in Jerry Falwell's little little group thing, Jerry, I'm a, Jerry Fartwell's little group, there's over 2,000 affiliated religious clubs and schools uh -huh. that get information from him. They are, pray, see you at the poll day, when they, organ, when they go around it like, and have their little prayer circles, just like the Wiccans had their prayer circle and backside the school of Cove this week. <laughs> so, you know, there is more religion in schools than they possibly could realize. They, and it's there now more than it ever was. Well, yeah. I'm, one day I'll bring in this survey from 1963. It's really interesting. All right. Yeah. They want it legal. Let's go on down to Bob. Hello. Good morning, Bob. Hi, Bob. Yeah. Uh, 
I had a few questions to ask. Like the other day, I was watching y'all's show, and y'all were talking about the display of the birth of Christ and how you're against it. What's that? Uh, that you mean you mean like a French. nativity scene? A show, but I just I don't know. What's y'all's opinion on that? You mean like a nativity scene? Yeah. It, uh, I see no reason for it to be in a, a public building that our tax money pays for. If you want to put up a statue of uh, Jesus or the nativity scene in your home, you're more than welcome to. But uh, it should it should public grounds and public. Uh, money to maintain it and everything else should not be used. Yeah, our government should well, not be in the... Well, find the time to think about this stuff, though. I'm kind of inquisitive. <laughs> Where do we find the time to think about it? Yeah. Our brains are always working. Do you, uh, do you have to make time like to... like a very typical onslaught to me, dude. Is it? it uh, what? Do you, do you have to schedule time for your thinking there? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Okay. Well, Bob, I got a question for you. Yeah, what's that, buddy? Um, what if I walked onto the, pub the, the, the public grounds, and I'm from the Temple of Set, and I put up all my little displays, my black candles and everything else. Is that appropriate? Is it appropriate? No, yeah. I don't think so. I don't think calling God an idiot is appropriate. Well, I, I, then, then you are, you only see me. So you're, so you're going to say that anything he suggests is inappropriate now because you don't like one thing he said. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying he just called God an idiot. I'm I said if there was an idiot God. Now, if there's an idiot no, God, if fine. If idiot God, I'm pretty sure I... Yeah, but he, 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 he did... Ha the... Not to d defend David because there's no reason to defend that, but he did say if. He did use the word if in that sentence, so you, you didn't... I don't recall that, but... Uh, that's not quite all right. Well, my point about it is simple, is that nothing would have happened if there really was this omniscient God, it, it would never have occurred. And the simple fact is, multiple things are occurring, and you cannot prove or rash... Or r you cannot show A reacted on B, cause C without external factor D, and put God as the A. But what provokes you to, like, go through all this trouble to have your own TV show and stuff, like... Promoting this view of you, Bob. Well, do Christians like, have TV I'm shows? I'm I'm not trying to get angry. Bob, do no, Christians? No, you're fine. Do Christians have TV shows? Yes, they do. So yeah. we, so do we. But I don't watch them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching ours. But uh, we appreciate your viewing. Huh? You guys look like the guys I used to pick on in high school. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry to hear that too. So you're a bully, <laughs> is what you're saying? <laughs> no, you're just a nerd. Okay. okay. Hey, yeah, uh, Bob. Thanks for your call. You I have know what a baseball week. bat was for. You have a great week. Uh, let's go on down to which one? First one? Mark. Mark. Hey, hey, how are y'all? Good, how are you? Great. Great, well, um, I wanted to uh, talk to you. I'm a first time watching your show, and, uh, and uh, I, uh, I am a Christian. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if y'all ever look through the Bible very often, if y'all... Okay. Yes, as a matter of fact, we got two sitting here on the set right now. Okay, is that now... As far as the Old Testament goes, I, I have a very hard time swallowing, you know, very much of that. Uh -huh. okay. But have you all had an opportunity to study Jesus at all and Jesus' teaching? Uh, yeah, I've done quite a lot of research uh, on this mythical person you call Jesus, and uh, I, my own personal research has brought me to the conclusion that, this, that it was all a myth, that the person never existed. You, 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 know, you don't think he was actually... You know, born whether it's immaculate conception or not, you don't think Jesus actually existed? I don't. And, 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 and it, if you you can't get any other source besides the Bible to uh, show that this guy ever existed. Can, can, the Bible wasn't just uh, written by one, uh, one person, even like you said, the Dead Sea Scrolls and and, and all that. Sure but even if you the Dead Sea Scrolls were written before Jesus, so they don't even mention Jesus. Well, even nonetheless, if the the old. Uh, Jeff has a comment. I'd like to. I'd like to say something. Sure. Kind of make a comment that I think might be more to the point. Sure. Um, uh, sure. We're familiar with uh, with the stories of Jesus and what the stories say happened. Okay. Um, and then there were there were there. I have I have two reactions to that. One, a uh, bunch of stories about supernatural occurrences. You know, stories are not sufficient to establish that supernatural occurrences actually happened. So even if there was an historical person, person Jesus, I'd need a lot more evidence than some people writing down stories to convince me that anything supernatural had happened. And two, uh, there are bits of, uh, of, of advice in those stories about Jesus that are, I, I think, good advice about how to live. The problem with those bits of advice is that they're not unique to Christianity. 
they predate Christianity, and they also come from completely different traditions. So, so then, even if you've got an historical Jesus, you've got a guy who is, who is you know, there's no reason to think that, they, that he was supernaturally informed about right and wrong, giving people advice that already existed in other, yeah. uh, from other sources. So, what's the big deal? Well, I mean, just, okay, even if you're talking about the uh, uh, immaculate healings, that type of stuff, if you, in other words, you don't believe, even though... Well, why should we? Do well, you have a videotape? Uh, yeah, even though, still, you, you're admitting that Jesus was, uh, uh, if he did exist, yeah. he was a very wise man. In other words, yeah, if, he is, si if he existed and if he said exactly the things that he said, then some of what he said is good advice. Right, for example, I would, I would raise, I would put him up with Gandhi, as a matter of fact. They, now, Gandhi, of course, you agree he existed. All right. We, we have uh, photographic proof of Gandhi and everything else. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, they didn't have photographs. Then. So should we worship Gandhi? No, no. Where are you but, going with this? See, Jesus' teachings, a lot of the religion, they, they change it around. They make uh, uh, religion real, like you said, kind of hokey and mystical and put a, 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 a real weird spin on it. And, uh, Whenever Christianity is very simple, it's very simple. And they ask Jesus, in other words, if you believe in the gospel, the gospel, I mean, the definition of it, most Christians don't even know, the definition of the gospel is, I'm sure you all know, the teachings of Jesus and the disciples. That's the definition of the gospel if okay. you look up in the dictionary. Okay. Now they ask Jesus, they said, Jesus, they said, man, you're, you're sure sharing a lot of knowledge with us. They said, can you uh, just break it down for us? And Jesus said, yeah, I'll make it simple for you. He said, rule number one, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Okay, why? I don't. It, I, I respect the Indians. Now, I don't have any pic actual pictures of Indians, but I believe the American Indian existed. I believe the Mayan Indian We have that. Not, 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 no, 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 wait a minute. Yeah. Why? Why love. love this being whose existence we can't even prove? Well, before I answer that, let me just finish one last thing. What okay. I'm saying. I mean, I, would, I'm just, I just want to point out that when you say that, the, I mean, I, I wouldn't include that as one of the good pieces of advice that Jesus gave, okay? Well, Things is, like get along with your neighbors okay, without... That was exactly what he said next. I don't know if and, you're and with that, that. And that advice predates Jesus by quite, a, by quite a bit. Right. Are you talking about the golden rule, Mark? Love other, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Oh, right. great! I just right. I've been reading a book on that. Go ahead, do the golden rule thing. All right, the golden rule is traced all the way back to Confucianism as it's basically its earliest roots. And you take a look at all the travel and trade routes that occurred, and all the intermixing of ideas, and then it shows up in Babylonian writings, and it shows up in other cultures around it that predate. And five hundred years before. There were several people saying the same rule, including the Greeks, in a different form. Right. So, you know, there's nothing in Christianity that wasn't there in the other religions. Plus, this is about your, your God, Jesus. Okay. Have you ever heard the cult of Mithra? Mithra. M-I-T-H-R-A. No. The cult of Mithra has the same number of disciples, the same holidays, a savior God, and everything else. And if you even take it even closer... There were at least 16 people killed claiming to be the Messiah, the Christ. That's a title. That's not a name. Right. Well, and I'm hundreds of people. Have you ever heard of Masada? No. Well, Masada is where one of the last groups actually died trying to reestablish God's kingdom. Uh, well, can I ask you those were Jews. Yeah, we have a bunch of other colors, but go ahead quickly. Okay, well, those were right, Jews now, in Masada. And, yeah. and this is just right to you. You said you're uh, in the... Do you believe, you to the far right, the, um, the man that was just speaking... Mark. Oh, yeah. Him. Do you believe Damn. that you can burn black candles and cast a spell of some type? A spell? No, 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 no. <laughs> No, I mean, do you No, believe? he doesn't. No, I, go ahead, David. Yes, I, am, David. I am an atheist. Okay. Bottom line. Now, I don't burn candles, but I respect. I have a. I live with a woman who does, my wife. Okay. And I respect. Let me finish. I'm okay. going to answer you. I respect her right to believe what she wants to. Okay. And I will defend her right to believe what she wants to. Right. And our daughter has a choice when she gets old enough of mind to make a decision. But. To con but, you know, to condemn anyone for their practice, I don't condemn them for their practice. Yeah, I do. condemn them when their practice and belief starts infringing other people. Right. Well, uh, can, do you believe they can cast, actual cast, even minor, you know, power, you know? No, he's saying no. I am an atheist. I don't believe in that stuff, okay? Okay, so then you don't believe in evil. 
And then you also what? Get, what? In other words, you don't believe in evil. How did you get? How did you make that leap, sir? Not evil, but in other words, you don't believe that you can use a, a spell of. There's not. You don't believe in anything supernatural. Right. Oh, okay. 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 I can't tell you the number of supernatural things that have supposedly occurred when I sat back and looked over them. I just realized it was just me doing my day-to-day -day thing and being a little more aware of my surroundings, like when I almost didn't kill a car yesterday when I was driving the school bus. Right. Well, I've had people that believed they could do witchcraft spells, but they didn't believe that, of course, God had, you know, they believed in uh, dark spells, but they didn't believe in, you know, in other words, that God had the, you know, any authority at right. all. And right. And that is just kooky, because it's as soon fun. as you believe in anything supernatural, the floodgates are open. Right. As soon as you believe that it's rational to believe in any of that stuff, you have no justification to say, well, this supernatural stuff is true, but that supernatural stuff is not true, other than your own personal opinion. Well, just to sum it up, I know y'all go to the comments, is, is, is Jesus, I think the importance of his teachings is... So that at least, even though he might have been uh, defer, you know, taking stuff from uh, that was well known from all other you know areas, just good common sense is treat, we need to treat other people better. Same as you know, respect. We need to each of us need to. Respect. Oh, we agree with that. That's why some of us were out there counter protesting the fundamentalists that were trying to get the Wiccans kicked out of Fort Hood. Right. And it's and it's uh, ninety nine percent of the armed conflict going on right now around the world is one religion. Uh, telling another religion how they're going to go to heaven. So you know. We can be brutally truthful and say that there's a lot of political and social motives behind it and a lot of greed, but you get like Northern Ireland. The one reason they will never settle that conflict is, is, is the religious, uh, religious clashes. You know, the, the religion may not be the exact heart of it. It might be based on other things, but religion is a major factor in not allowing it to be negotiated out and settled. So I think the world would get along a whole lot better if we didn't have religion. Yeah. Different religions. I believe you're right. I believe there's Same. there's only one religion. Either you're you know, <laughs> you believe in God, or you know you don't. <laughs> All right. You have a great week. Sure, you too, bud. Uh, <laughs> he just doesn't get it. <laughs> no, I I, oh, Martin, well. you got the other one checked. Oh, Martin. Martin. Uh, okay. Martin. Martin. Yeah. How you doing, guys? Thanks for all. Hi, Martin. Uh, good uh, show this morning. Thank you. That's what I watched for the first time last week and came out to the bagel shop. Met a lot of you. Uh, great bunch of folks. Can be there today. Need to get you guys my dues. <laughs> yes, there you go. Oh, nice of you. <laughs> anyway, just listening to your uh, your last two callers. <clears throat> now, uh, by the way, this feedback problem that I think you're having is probably due to the fact that you get people calling up and leaving their tele uh, their the TV volume on and talking in front of their TV. So and that's sometimes, yeah, that's we can tell back, though. Yeah, it's feeding back into the phone. Anyway, right. well, these guys, well, you know, made about as much sense as you could expect. Has anyone? Are there any? Are there any books in? Um, like in skeptical or atheist literature that deal now with... We're getting, we're getting feedback now. Is your TV on? No, mine's muted. Yeah, it's see, weird. so we're, we're having a problem here. Yeah, in the studio. No, whatever. But go ahead, you're asking I'm about sorry. a yeah, is there any? Is there, uh, is there anything that you can recommend that deals with... I mean, has anyone ever done any really good studies on the psychology of belief and particularly religious and supernatural yeah. well, there's a there is a There is an old, old, old study called... Something in the Madness of Crowds. Do you guys know the rest of the title? Uh, I got I got a book at home. The Beliefs and, and Crowd Mania. I can't remember. I got it on my home. Yeah, I'll pass a couple of and titles. This goes back to like the 1800s. Yeah. Uh, extraordinary where, Delusions in the Madness of Crowds. Extraordinary yes. Delusions in the Madness of Crowds. Yeah, that sounds a, there's close a, to the title. Yeah, um, and there's a book listed here called, um, and I'm looking at Skeptic Magazine here in their little... Uh, uh, mail order list. There's a book called Believing in Magic, The Psychology of Superstition. Has anyone read that? Uh, no. No, it sounds interesting. Yeah, um, apparently it's, uh, it's, it's examines current behavioral research, which suggests that everyday superstitions are the natural result of several well-understood psychological processes. The author entertainingly demonstrates how complex and paradoxical human behaviors can be understood through science. Just as, it just seems an interesting subject to me because, uh, getting back to what Jeff was talking about earlier, with the way in which Christianity sort of spins these uh, tragedies that have been happening in our in our culture lately mm -hmm. into a means by which uh, their religion is e even more justified rather than if you were to take a look at for example Columbine High School or this this horrible thing that happened in Fort Worth and you know a, a rationalist would look at this situation and say well this pretty much closes the books on God um, but it, it's fascinating to me how you know the nature of belief and, and this sort of belief that is so strong that even if uh, what it, what anybody I, I think any rationalist would would consider <laughs> pretty powerful evidence um, to the contrary is is I mean occurs right in front of your face. 
yeah. uh, or something that would at least make you raise questions and raise doubts. That to them becomes you know, the, the the desire to believe, the desperation to believe, becomes so strong. They're just like, no, 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 no. Now we have to eat, be even more devout and even more. It's it's. I was watching Seven Hundred Club the other day. Oh, I, I get a big kick oh. out of that, and you know. Robertson always has has he's so skilled at spin. I mean he I mean I think his his brand of spin makes you know you know Ken Starr and Bill Clinton just look like amateurs. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know of course I believe it, you're talking about cognitive dissonance. Yeah, exactly. Or or willful stupidity. Another thing you know for which there is no cure. But um, the the whole issue that um, our, our, this first came to, to my mind when the, the Columbine High School shooting uh, occurred, and there was all this publicity be out, publicity re- revolving around one of the victims, who's this young girl, you know, whose last words before she, her brains were blown out, yeah, uh, was, was yes, I Cassie believe Bernal. in God, and Chris, and and the Christianity immediately took that and ran with it, and that see and 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 waved that around as as proof that uh, we need to believe in God and be even more devout. And my thinking was, now hold on, just one second. You know, you know. First off, uh, what why, I, you know, what kind of a god is this that will? Uh, so, okay, so you guys are saying that your god is kind of like, oh, Slobodan Milosevic. <laughs> you know, he's perfectly happy to allow his own followers to be massacred if it benefits him politically. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the the I mean, this whole this whole um, you know, showing her love for God thing. Is so twisted. Well, it, it, it would have taken very little effort on the part of the big G yeah. to convert all of us, every atheist but, but, but in the world, that, in that moment. But here, here's this girl. Now let's let's, you know, let's assume for a sec- let's ex- accept for a second the premise uh-huh. oh, that if yeah. she had said no to uh-huh. the question, and that's let's uh, further assume that this even happened, with there, which there is some serious doubt about. Okay, uh-huh. uh, but assuming the story even happened, let's just, let's just accept for a second the premise that had she said no, the gunman would have said, "Okay, you get to live." <laughs> Right? Now, if that's the case, what do we have here? We have a girl who well, stands up for God. Hang on. Yeah. No, please, please. No, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. You have a girl who stands up for God. For what? To save her God a moment of annoyance. Right? Okay. The worst thing that would have happened for God had she denied him would be, huh? <laughs> for a second, right? And then he sees a gun come up, and the guy walks away. Oh, and then she goes, "Sorry, God," and he, and and being a forgiving dude, right? He goes, uh-huh. "Okay," right? I mean, what is the deal? Yeah, Why was bizarre. this a very good bizarre. thing? On even from their point of view, it makes no sense. Yeah, it, it it's just it seems it seems really strange. But of course, you know, if she had said no and had her life spared, then I think Christians would have even gotten more mileage out of that. They said, well, obviously this is now, you, you, this was a Yeah, that, right. It then exactly it would have been, what, oh, it's anti-Christian. Exactly what so Pat Robertson was saying last week when everyone is, you know, he said, well, people are trying to wonder why this guy went into this church and did this. And, well, I, you know, of course, you know, the obvious answer to him is that he was satanically possessed. Christians have another god called Satan. And, and uh, you know, anytime anything bad happens, it's this other god that, that, is, that is doing bad it, things. It's not just Robertson. I'll read you a quote from the, from the pastor of that church. He said... He said, um, it is my heart's desire that if the investigation gets cleared up somehow, some way, we can worship God in this facility Sunday morning. Our heart's desire is that the king of darkness will not prevail over the kingdom of light. See, so that's like, yeah, there's no such thing as insanity, it's demonic possession. Yeah. But I was wrong with to, you? Uh, I was, I was uh, talking about this very thing well, one time when I was on, a, I was on an airplane and... and uh, you know, had, had the pleasure of sitting next to a minister, and and and, and uh, you know, mentioned that I was an unbeliever, and, and so he he went through the whole spiel of you know trying to convince me, and I was just coming right back at him, and and so he he we got on the whole God and Satan bit, and I said, well now hang on a second, I am I led to assume then that Satan is every bit as powerful. If if Satan can thwart your God, then he must be, if not at least as powerful, or even not more, more so. You know, I mean, because how do you thwart the will or the the purpose of an omniscient, omnipotent being if you are, if you do not have equal or greater power? Exactly. And and his answer was no. Of course, Satan isn't as powerful as God. Are you kidding? You know, you know, God can kick Satan's ass. And right. Well, why has why hasn't he done so? Why is Satan even a problem? Why is there anything right. wrong with this planet and with human behavior at all? Yeah. And he came out with, and it is so interesting how they will stretch and how they will reach to rational to to rationalize this to themselves. He began to, he got into this whole thing about how, 
all times are one with God or something. There's no God has. Oh right, right. Time. He's outside of time. Yeah, and and so and, and so what he tried to convince me was that well, you know, God he he actually he already has done this. He already has defeated Satan, but in our time frame, it hasn't happened yet. Right. And and, and I was just kind of sat there, and and, and uh, he he got uh, he got at the end of this whole spiel, and eventually, <laughs> and I and I said, now, it, it doesn't occur to you how everything you just said was completely insane. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not ter- terribly tactful of you. Yeah, but. well, I, I don't think I, I used those. I, I don't think I said exactly those words. I just think, you know, it's, I'm sorry, but nothing that you just said made sense, sir. You know, I, I just said, yeah. and it doesn't occur to you that that it makes that there's no logical connection from this to that or to the other, and and, and then he went on with uh, once again the usual, the typical fallback, which is God's ways are so mysterious we can't understand them. Da da right. da. Yeah, if you can't I understand know, them, just, why are you a minister? Yeah. <laughs> It, 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 right. I don't know. It's just the the psychology of religious belief, and particularly religious belief that reaches all the way to 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 extreme fundamentalism, where yeah. you have to hold on to that belief like a lifeline. No, I mean regardless of anything. I mean re- regardless of whatever uh, ed- evidences or occurrences present themselves to you, and it's and, and even the refusal, the blanket refusal to entertain anything else, any other possibilities, and to look at a situation critically. It's just it's a fascinating. Yeah. Psychological phenomenon to me, and I was well, just wondering if there were any. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm. I'm not familiar with psychological studies on that. I want to look up, look for that book. Are you going to be at the bagel shop today? Um, yeah, I'm going to try to make it. Cool. I'd like to meet you. Yeah, I'll get that name a, of that. Yeah, book you weren't there it. last week, as I recall. Yeah, I could. Yeah, let it. me give you the information here. Um, I've got nothing to write it on now. Yeah, uh, uh, we'll give it to me at the bagel shop, and we'll read it on the show. Yeah, I'll bring the the nearest skeptics just out. By the way. Okay. Uh, and oh, I may even have that one. Yeah, it's uh, the um, volume seven, number two. Cloning is the cover. Yeah, story. I've got that one. Okay, okay. cool. Uh, all, we'll see you at the sh- at the shop. Thanks great a lot show, for going. guys, and uh, you know, keep uh, giving them hell. No pun intended. <laughs> okay, <you laughs> they've take... got they're, they've already got the hell. Uh, that's we true. haven't got any hell for them. That's right. <laughs> take care. <laughs> Thanks for calling. All right, just remind everyone. Uh, once we're done here, we're going to head down to the Hot, hot Jumble Bailery, which is down on West Fifth and Lavaca, and it's free and open to the public. And uh, so we got plenty of phone callers here. This is September nineteenth, and yep. our, our guest David has gone off to the uh, uh, ethical culture um, classes for the kids. Right, and uh, where atheists teach their young children how to behave and not go nuts and shoot people. <laughs> for those of you Christians that think that if we don't believe in God, we must be lunatics. All right, let's go on down to Sigh. Jason. Yeah, boy, this is interesting conversation. <laughs> I found it found it really entertaining that somebody can put Jesus up with Gandhi. It's like, why don't we put Buddha up with George Bush? There you go. You know, I mean, the the rational and the logic of of the Christian mind. But I was wondering, as atheists, do you? Basically, okay, let's get God and all that stuff out of the way. Do you believe in spiritual matters? I mean, do you believe that? Like, I sit in a concert uh, at a concert, okay, and the crowd is in a particular spirit. Right. Uh, tragedies like in Fort Worth happen. They put the nation via the media in a particular spirit. Well, right. Uh, all those, all those things you described, uh, I think, fall more in the line of emotion, and uh, and, and we are right. emotional creatures. But, but but are we not like lemmings then? And, and and basically, <laughs> we're being spiritually, we're being bounced around from tragedy to joy to you know, viva la lance, you know, oh boy, when you know, so we're our spirits are up as a town and all that stuff. Uh, oh, but tragedy see. hits in Fort Worth. So as a people. Uh, these things have an effect on on things, and I'm not saying that there's a god that causes them, but there's a spirit within man in mankind as, as information travels. And, and I was wondering, do you deny do you deny spiritual matters such as that happening? No, no I think you're talking about a, a, there's a universal uh, mindset that just comes through evolution that we're all part of the same species, right. so we would have. A, a, a mindset that we all came from, and oh, I'm right. thinking well, that you, would cover yeah, a lot of you know, what, the stuff what? that you're talking about. We just wouldn't. We would tend to dance around the word spiritual because 
that can be used as a metaphor for emotional response. Okay, how did, purely we, get, physical, how did, how did we get to the moon? You know, that's no, pretty, no, wait, that's wait, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> Certainly not by our spirits wafting the, up there. Yeah, there had right? to be, you know, the spirit of man, if you think about all the time that was invested in that, yeah. and getting, getting, just think about trying to do that. Yeah, can I, please let, me, please let me finish my response. Uh, okay, sir. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, okay. I thought I want to okay. make my whole point before we move on to that, because then I'll be okay. able to respond to your next question, uh, okay. and it makes sense. certainly, certainly. Um, we got a move on the rocket. Oh, okay, cool, thank cool. You. Thank cool. you, Arlo. Off to the moon. Uh, we would try to dance around the word spiritual, spiritual for that stuff because that can be a metaphor for merely, uh, merely emotional responses that that can be explained entirely neurologically, right. or it okay. can be used to open the door to start talking about ghosts and magic oh, oh, no. and I mean, and you know, and prayers there, and gods and things. So well, so we would try, tend to try to set that word aside. But if oh, okay. all you mean by that word, if all you mean by that word are you know the emotional responses of people, and 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 how the, we can pass those emotional responses around by seeing how other people are reacting, by getting excited by the same things that excite other people. Sure, we we, we don't disagree that that exists. Of course, it does. And then on my point is uh, mm -hmm. uh, again, I think you. Uh, uh, motivation would be a better word than spiritual, and Hitler was a wonderful motivator. Okay, yes, he was. He yeah. was. He was superb. I mean, you know, if you want to go on the Christian side, oh my God, the Antichrist has come already, and know, oh, the vultures are gathering for the big feast of all the flesh, you know. And, but you know, that's a spiritual war. If you really look at the Bible and you study it, I think that the Bible is really a fascinating piece of literature, and if it's understood, uh, uh, that you'll find that a lot of psychological principles and our understanding of the human mind comes from the Bible, but it also comes from other sources, too. I think that uh, I think that all religions have something to offer, but the problem is, and, and it's something that I fight, is I believe that there's a spirit, right? But the problem is, is there are factions. And the factions are such as the Christians that dig their heels in and use tragedy, uh, you know, as a spin for yeah. their cause. Although I believe, on the other hand, too, that you are putting forth a faction, but I think that's what we need to keep this world going around. Yeah. I, I, I I believe that, that, you know, what you're doing is correct, because what's going on on those church channels and all that crap is that people are sitting back at their country clubs because they can't afford, uh, because of their tithing, to, to do any better on a Sunday morning and relax. Not like you uh, watch our show. And, <laughs> and some of them do. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know it, it's good to see viewpoints, and it's good to see taxpayers' dollars going for that rather than putting crosses on, you know, monuments and all that stuff, uh, you know, back to the nativity scenes and all that stuff, that's, you know, that's crap. We shouldn't fund that. Uh, we could, shouldn't We shouldn't fund a lot of the crap that's going on, but what we should do is we should broaden our horizons by trying to see through our brother and sister's viewpoint. And one tragic comment I was reading on AOL, oh, don't I sound like an AOL type person, uh, but what I was reading, one of the neighbors of the gentleman that, that did the shooting up there it was the last paragraph of this. She said that I really had no use for him. He was worthless. We can't be looking at, at, at our next door neighbors like they're useless, yeah. or our coworkers like they're useless. That's disgusting. Yeah, I you agree. Know? Absolutely and, agree. And you know, uh, uh, you know, churches aren't helping the matter out. You know, they just say, "Oh, you're a brother in Christ because you come to our church, so you're yeah. special." Yeah. You know, and if you'll but, be one but, of our brothers you know, in Christ, then we'll be and, nice to you. And, and we need to be we need to be free thinkers, but we need to be rational thinkers too. There are a lot of dangerous Christian organizations out there that just look white as all get out. Uh, the bigger they are, the worse they are, and sometimes the smaller ones. Some of the stuff coming out of those is. Uh, uh, we're we're breeding within these Christian organizations. We're breeding some problems because when a person's been in an organization for ten years or so, and all of a sudden they boot them out with nothing, uh, and you have an irrational person because they're superstitious, you have a dangerous situation. You know, so. Um, I have you know, a bunch of cars. Well, um, I just thought I'd share. You know, the I Jews agree. have been shot, the Mexicans have been shot. Everybody's getting shot. You know, so and it's not big, nice. Big deal. Big right. deal. Just right. treat one another well and love one another. All right. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thanks very much for your call. Yeah. You have a great week.
That, rem- uh, that reminded me. Uh, I I seen someone. Uh, uh, which politician? There's actually a politician out there that want, now wants to include Christians in the hate crimes, and uh, because of the because of one church shooting, then they're now. Oh, as they are, they are now a target. Yes. A potential target of hate yes, crimes. Yes, and and so and, uh, it's amazing. Uh, let's go on down to uh, Chris. Yeah, um, I, I think I think more than well. While there are some Christians who would capitalize on this and spin with regards to the church shooting, I, I think it's probably closer to the fact that you're looking at a group of people who have invested so much personal energy into forming their belief systems, whether rightly or wrongly, that. It's, it's got to be a defense mechanism. I mean, they can't oh, sure. rationally say, you know, oh, why would God let this happen? So sure. there, there has to be the... the, you know, the I, I, oh, absolutely. When they are distraught is the last, the, you know, the, the last time that they're going to be able to, you know, summon up the courage to look at what they believe, believe and say, well, not only did my, you know, sister get, get killed by this gunman, not only did that tragedy happen, but also I suddenly realize I'm an idiot. Right. You know. Right. Right. Well, and, so, and, and I, mean, I completely understand, but we need to look at that and understand what it is. Yeah. Well, and and well, see, and that's the thing. My wife is is a uh, Southern Baptist, and uh, we're sitting around the table with brother-in-law and the wife and the whole thing, and discussing capital punishment. And I just kind of bring up the thing. Well, you know, there's. I think for the last twenty years, there have been eighteen people that have since been found innocent that have been killed. And his response. No emotion or anything. Well, I guess they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and God wouldn't have let them die if He hadn't. Had them. <laughs> I mean, I, I was so enraged. I, 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 I couldn't. No, I, I couldn't. My mouth just dropped. Um, jaw just dropped to the. I couldn't, you know, believe because this. I, I like my brother-in-law. He's a re, he's a great guy, but I, I just couldn't believe that 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 was coming out of his mouth. You know, and, and it, it was just this attempt at rationalization you know I just wanted to say, well what if that was Katie your daughter or you know no, <laughs> well, God wrong place at the wrong time oh well right exactly you know, I mean our omnipotent loving God didn't lift a finger because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time it's their fault yeah yeah I just what it, is that uh, you know not that not that any of the quotes I've got are expressing that sentiment but sure that you you run into that too yeah and well yeah I just I just kind of wanted to bring that up to I appreciate that knowledge. yeah yeah. And, st- and the, the last 15 minutes of the show is our busy. I said we have a bunch of no. calls here. Go right ahead, man. All right. All right. You have a great, for calling. Yes, you have a great week. Let's go on down to Cindy. Cindy? Hello? Hello? S- Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Yes. This is Stephanie. 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 Okay. Uh, okay, somebody Stephanie. wrote... We'll okay, <laughs> Stephanie. What can we do for you? Um, um, all I wanted to say was I've noticed how this church shooting is, oh, so awful. Like it's worse than some other shooting, you know. Yeah, that it's worse than the <laughs> school it shooting. In the church, it can happen anywhere. It's <laughs> yeah, I yeah, mean, they exactly. Think it's so the, so the, bad. The the, the a, a church is not some kind of special magical protective field. Exactly, and and someone said, you know, at first when they heard the shots, that they thought it was a skit. I. Thanks and for yeah, bringing that up. I have I a comment about from that. from the Colorado school shooting that they thought, you know, it was a school prank. Right. People get with the program. It's really happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought uh, it was interesting in the wake of a story we did a, a week or two ago about the minister who was uh, at, uh, at his Sunday school classes. He was po- uh, stabbing Pokemon toys with swords and having little kids pull the limbs off and burning things in front of the little kids and getting them to chant, you know, that Pokemon was evil. <laughs> and he, in, in the space of two sentences, he goes from, well, we're not doing this just to be, uh, just to be controversial. And, oh, we have to make do with our, the special effects that we can manage on our limited budget. We're not Hollywood. <laughs> so really, he's saying, boy, if we could get Hollywood special effects, we'd use them. And I'm wondering, you know, why... Uh, why these kids who are in a church, right, a Baptist church, the Baptists being some of the people who are the, are, scream the loudest about violence on television, what made them think that their own church was a place that would use violence, right, a gunman shooting guns off in their church as some kind of educational tool? Man. Right? Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I would uh, love to add a couple of things to your little sure. list of violent actings going on in churches. 
Um, I actually have footage of this. There's a evangelist who faked his own death just to get more ratings. And there's also a church, and this this was on tape as well, where they were pretending to shoot Santa Claus. Well, there you uh, go. See, and what what I'm saying is what I what I'm detecting here is not is not really an attitude that violence is bad on television, you know, in movies and things, and so we have to get rid of it. The message really is, violence is bad when somebody else is making money off of it. When we're using it to indoctrinate our own people, it's okay. And yeah. that that's pretty creepy. Yeah. Anyway, okay. y'all are doing a great job. Thank, well, you. thank you for coming. You have a great week. You too. All right, let's go on down to Pete. Pete? Hello? We got a Pete? Pete? Hello? Pete, we lost him. We lost him. Going down the... Pete, if you're still there, go ahead and call back. Pete. Yeah. We have another Pete. Pete. All right. Hi, Pete. This is uh, repeat. You got me? Repeat. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, as far as you're talking about Christians and, and uh, the violent events in Fort Worth, yeah. uh, I, I haven't heard the whole show, but has anybody called in to talk about all the violence that's been done in the name of Christianity? Yes, we've done that uh, on the show uh, a couple different times. Yeah. Uh, do uh, you, you have an example you'd like to share with us? Well, I think the various Christian churches, especially the Catholic Church, have been responsible for untold violence down throughout history against uh, just about every other group of people they come in contact with, especially uh, uh, Native groups like Native Americans and South Americans that they uh, tortured and, uh, and killed and committed genocide in the name of... Uh, uh, the love of Jesus Christ. Exactly. Yeah. And, and we got... What? <laughs> oh, expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> the Spanish Inquisition. But, uh, thanks, Arlo. And, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right, sir. Um, but, you know, I, I, I wasn't going to bring that up because I would hate for anybody to get the impression that we think that, you know, Christians are getting what they deserve because the, nobody deserves because of what somebody else in their organization did for a lunatic to come in and start shooting them. Mm. There, there's no justification for that at all. But I do appreciate your call. All right, thanks. You have a great week. That was good input there, yes. Let's go on down. Folk to songs of the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Arlo. <laughs> uh, Julian. Hey, um, I was watching Channel 3, and yeah. they had this lunatic priest who was just going off about if you go to Christ, that he will love you and everything will be fine. And it, It's really stupid, because any day, you know, something could not be fine, and and I'm converting to, like, Judaism, because I do believe in God, but not in the way that they do. I think that God created nature, and, like, that's, that's why bad things happen, not because Satan is making them. He was okay. saying that, that the kids were getting, that, that we should put blockers on our TV and on the Internet, because we shouldn't trust our kids, because the devil is going to get to them, mm. and all this kind of crap. That I would point bad. out... In the news story on this lunatic that opened fire at the church in, uh, in uh, Fort Worth, they made a point of stating that there was no computer in the guy's house, mm -hmm. right? So uh, it's entirely possible for people to go crazy without any influence from the Internet, you know? And yeah. that's, that's just, it's just a scapegoat. It's something that's, uh, that people don't understand. Oh, big surprise, you know, weirdo fundamentalists don't know, on, know things about how the Internet works or what's going on there. And so they blame it for stuff. Um, and I was wondering. Sure. I, I, I think there is a difference between animals and humans. I mean, I completely believe in the Darwin um, theory and everything, but, like, like language and writing and stuff. Yeah. We haven't at least, if there is, discovered it by animals. Uh, what sets us apart from them? The, we, there's uh, plenty of examples of communication inside the animal world. Uh, bees do the little dance to tell where the uh, the food is, and it, it yeah. gives the direction and distance. Yeah. And can you can you uh, can you just like without a compass go up in the air and know which way is south? <laughs> Well, no. 
My point yeah. is that some creatures have instincts and abilities at some things, and other creatures have instincts and ability at other things. If you're going to pick out human beings and say we're special because we can do language, oh, well, no, you darn no. well, to be we... fair, you got to pick out, you know, homing pigeons <laughs> for yeah. to be special for that. And if and at that point, well, everything's special. So what's the point? You know, that human beings aren't apart from all the rest of the animals. All the animals are apart from each other. Yeah. If you're going to be fair with that standard, and every. Um, and through the history there, every time that they tried to differentiate human with some kind of thing from tool making to language to whatever else. Yeah, there's generally we, an exception. We've been able to find an, an, the same, something very similar to it in the animal world somewhere. So uh, it, uh, the only way you can really differentiate is DNA. You can't go through by uh, you know, certain traits. Uh, um, you have to get all the way down to the genetic level. Are there animals that kill other animals of the same species? Yes. Really? Yeah, I mean, that, but not in self-defense? No. It, uh, Just like homicide? Exactly. It, uh, they, they were talking about uh, there's certain bear, uh, bear families there where if a uh, male comes upon another uh, cub that's not his own, he will, won't hesitate at all to eat it. If I may mention, chimpanzees have an equivalent to warfare for just segments of property. They'll pelt each other with rocks to death. Yeah. Yeah. See, so we can find an example in the animal kingdom of just about any example you want to come up with. Cool. Uh, Everybody wants to think that, that, that they're special, and that really underlies a lot of religious thinking. No, you know, I don't think we human domain... Beings, first it was the Earth is special because it's the center of the universe. <laughs> oh, no, the Earth goes around the sun. Then the sun is special because it's the center of the universe. Oh, no, it goes around uh, the galaxy. And then the galaxy is special because it's the center of the universe. Well, no, it's just one of zillions of them. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, well, really, we need to stop looking at ourselves from some perspective other than we're special because it just doesn't work. Yeah, I don't think we domain over anything. Okay. I think, you know... Well, that we do, right? I mean, in a practical sense, if we can subjugate the Earth, well, yeah, I mean, we, we get to run stuff. But, but is that because we're special, or is that just because the way in which we are different from other animals gives us that capability? I mean, that we were meant to, like, be... I, I agree with that. Yeah, but, like... But, but then animal. I would say no, nothing is meant to be anything because I don't believe in any divine creator that may set things up any certain way. Right, no, right. I don't we believe can in divine... So we are then left either. in the position to decide whether we want to do one thing or another. Right, I don't believe in divine plan either. I think okay. what happens is because of what we do... Okay. All right. And, uh, I have a bunch of other calls. All right. We got to move on. Okay. Thanks yeah, for great, your call. Great week. Let's go on down to Ted. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to offer something that uh, I read in a book by Kurt Vonnegut. Sure. And it sort of distills my feelings about God. Um, it was a toast offered up by a character who had survived the concentration camps in... Germany, and her toast at Christmas time was simply, "Here's to God Almighty, the laziest man in town." <laughs> like, is that yeah. Slaughterhouse Five or what? Uh, I think it was in Jailbird. Jailbird. Okay. Yeah. There was a there was a great exchange on the internet in uh, the Alt Atheum news group. Um, somebody, you know, came up with the argument of, "Well, what is? Where is this God who's supposed to be all loving and all powerful?" Right. Where was he when those bullets started flying? And somebody responds, oh, God can't intervene with your free will because then we'd all be puppets, right? Well, somebody responded, so if you were walking along a pier and your friend fell in the ocean, you couldn't jump in and rescue him because that would make him your puppet. Right. You know? Well, no, that's just nonsense. So That was a wonderful quote. I, 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 I am a big fan of Kurt Vonnegut. I enjoy your show. Keep it up. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your call. Yeah. And let's 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 invite all the atheists watching the show down to the bagel shop. Yes. Uh, as soon as we're done here, we'll wrap up all the equipment and we'll head right down to West Fifth and Lavaca. It's a hot jumble bakery. And the, and then uh, uh, the first Sunday of every month, I want to remind you about our guest speaker series that we had a wonderful turnout last month. And it's at Furs at North Cross Mall. And this month, uh, well, October will be John Coons. And if if you haven't seen him, he, he's very entertaining and intelligent person. Uh, let's we're gonna try to do one more call here before we run out of time here. Drew, yeah, Hi, good Drew. morning. How's it going? I want to uh, to say that I like a lot of the comments you have on the institution of religion, but uh, that I think what 
the the foundation of of what religion is is you're kind of off on that. Uh, one of the comments you said earlier about helping your friend in the ocean that would be different than I think what you know God or the divine creator has or does with us. How's that? Well, I think that uh, you got to you got to realize the that we're all like when you die or when something when you you move on to another level. So what happens down here is just kind of uh, a proving grounds, if you will, some kind of a way that you uh, a way that you kind of grow yeah. and, and become something that can go and, and later become become. No, it, it, yeah, because have, there's wait, no, wait a minute. You have evidence of this. Do you have evidence that there is in fact a level other than this one. Well, I mean, you can argue about the evidence. Well, I, I think I mean, we need to. I mean, yeah, if, you're gonna say, if you're going to say it makes sense, if we assume that there are more levels that we go on to, and that right. this is just a proving grounds, well then, you really have to come across with the evidence to show that there are in fact more levels to go to. Otherwise, we're just fooling ourselves into not caring as much about this level as we ought to. Right. Right. Well, there, that, there's all sorts be bad. of... The, the evidence on that goes back and forth. I mean, there, of course, there's the Bible, and there's... Um, People who say that that can be proved, people say that that can't be proved. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of it is just abject faith. But um, you know, I have my reasons for believing in God or whatever. I think he he presents his proof to you at a certain time, and you can either deny it or accept it. I certainly have have seen my mm. own personal evidence well, uh, that, through, well, well, through a variety of miracles in my life. So uh, I know that. He's please out. share one miracle with us. Uh, we only got a few minutes, but I'd love to hear one of one of these wonderful miracles that you're discussing. Well, I mean, they're there. Uh, they're very personal to me. Uh, something okay. that happened. Right. Well, the, uh, we, mu well, we must go on and get the other callers in. Yeah, okay. we, can't, we can't really be very persuaded by something uh, you just won't tell us about. I, I, we, and, uh, yes. And, uh, I see we have uh, a couple lights there, and we only got a couple minutes yet. But just to remind everyone that uh, we're heading down to the hot jumble beggary as soon as we're done here. And oh, it, it's occurred to me that we that and I don't know if whether this has ever happened or not, but it's entirely possible for people who do come to the bagel shop to call and not have their voices recognized because we can't um, right. recognize you people. And we hope we haven't offended anyone by inviting you to the bagel shop if you're already somebody that comes. Because uh, <laughs> uh, thought I'd just point that out. And they want to point out there's a lots of us. There's, a, there's lots of us at the bagel shop. There's lots of us at the yeah. bagel shop. There's more than just me and Jeff. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, in case. In case you don't want to meet me or Jeff, <laughs> David, he's or, yeah, you can come down and meet some of the other people there. Uh, uh, some of the wonderful crew we have here: Keith, Howard, Vic, and uh, Arlo, our sound guy. And uh, I, I, we have two minutes, and we have lights still going here. And whether or not we're going to try another call, we're waiting to see. Okay. And uh, I. I guess you want to do some, that new story. Well, then or Marvin Olasky. Yeah, okay. uh, I I like reading him. He most of the time he makes uh, a legitimate argument and all this. But uh, the one thing I got in here, it, it he it was on. I I didn't get the date. It was in this week's editorial. Uh, but basically, he, he claims that he was an atheist for ten years and that. He, He's no longer an atheist, and I find it hard to believe that it, once anybody's an atheist, that they can actually go back and to religion. When was he? In, when did he convert from being an atheist? At what uh, age? Uh, Fourteen is what it said. Right? Did you see? No, I didn't see that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. At age fourteen. Yeah. So, uh, I, this is just a comment for those those Christians out there who think that they used to be atheists and have converted. If you can't describe atheism to us in a way that we uh, nod and say, "Yeah, that's atheism," then you weren't. Then you, then you may have been an atheist in the, to the extent that you didn't happen to believe in any gods, but you can be that out of apathy. To really understand our point of view, you have to have thought about it like we have, and somebody at age 14 is not going to have done that. But basically he was saying that uh, um, atheists uh, forget about religion. That, and it, point, <laughs> you know, that they, oh, they, they, they just, dream about being able to forget about religion. Uh, yeah. That they just put it in the in, you know, in the the quote in here. They put it in the drawer and don't. And then years later, come to open up the drawer and there's nothing yeah. in there. Well, that's exactly what you would expect a guy who wasn't. It was uh, apathetic about religion when he was 14, and 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 then became a believer. Would think about atheism because, as far as he knows, that's all there is to it. And there, you know. But I, I doubt Marvin Olasky is watching our show. But I, I just want to let you know I, I I don't think you were ever a real atheist. And then, uh, <laughs> That uh, oh, the atheists in our group came to that point through a lot of thought and research and 
uh, uh, inner uh, reflection there. Yep. It uh, it just wasn't something that we just sort of forgot about. No, because it's thrown in our face every day. It, uh, so any of the callers that are still online, our voicemail is 371-2911. Feel free to call our voicemail and let us know what you think. That's fine. I see we still have Missy's name as part of the crew. And, uh, mm. We have to update that crew list there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we love you, Austin. We'll be back here at 9 a.m. Channel 16. See you next week. Bye, folks.